am a tutor for programming modules and also for uh, mathematics modules. So in this video today, I'm going to cover two lessons, which are if statement and also the while loop. So we are going to do while loop and also we're going to start with an if statement. So feel free to ask questions on the comment and then also feel free to WhatsApp me at 0723373640. The, my cell phone number, they are written below the descriptions. So you can just check them on the descriptions to verify. And then if you are willing to attend the classes or evening classes, we have evening classes for course 1511 and course 1512, which is C++ introduction to program introduction to C++ or introduction to programming one and also introduction to programming two, uh, course 1512, which is an introduction to OOP object orientation programming. So let's begin with our today's lesson. So in today's lesson, we're going to start with an if statement. So I'm going to just write the headers. So remember, you have to include as you include your stream using namespace. Namespace std, then in main. So with the if statement, when we work with the if statement, if statement is either one condition is true or the other condition is false. So you might be wanted, for example, we're going to first write a program whereby we want to check if the person must write, must be able to pay tax or not. So in order for us to write this program, we can ask a user to enter the salary. We can ask a user to enter salary. When a user enter the salary, then we're going to see in, we can see in, we can use the word salary. Then when we use the word salary, because we have used the C in there, we have to declare our salary. Salary, it can be this in terms of decimal, we will use the float salary. Then we can use the if statement now. When we use the if statement, we can say if, for example, if salary is greater than or equals to 60,000, 60,000, I'm using 60,000 as an annually. Like if you are paying annually, so if salary is greater than or equal to 60,000, we will tell the user that you qualify, you, you must pay tax, you must pay tax. Else if the salary, else, else if the salary is below, is opposite of this, is below 60,000, is less than 60,000, we just use else. In the else statement, you can just say see out. Mm, you, you can just say you must start paying tax when you are or we can just make it simple. You do not, you must not pay tax. You must not pay tax. So this is the, uh, this is what, this is how I wrote it. So now we can run our code. Let's run our code. We can, don't forget to put it in zero. Then now we can build, compile your code. When you compile your code, there are no errors. Then you build your code, run a code. We can enter, let's say, for example, 40,000. You will tell you that you must not pay tax. So if you run again, let's say you earn 65K, 65,000, it will tell you that you must pay tax. So this is how we can also use if and else statement. So in the if and else statement, we have things like maybe you might want to write a uh, for example, we might want to tell the user that people who are earning between, let's say, in these salaries, which is between 60 to uh, 60 to what to 80. Let's make it 60 to 80. So we have something called end here. So end, we're gonna use salary again, and which is less equals to, we're gonna say 80,000. One, two, three. So before I go there, let me explain something. We have something called or. This means or. When we use or, or means everything. 
So if use or just know that even if it's in this statement here for grade equals to 60, it's going to check if the answer you used is greater than 60, if we use or and is less than 60. So everything is going to be true. So remember to also apply when using or and end to apply the through the tables in your district discrete mathematics. So when we use end in, in computer science is this one, which means end. End means things in between, in between, in between. So when we talk about in between, it will only check the way I've written it here. Salary is greater than so only check things that is greater than 60 and exactly less than or equal to 80. So anything outside of this boundary or outside of this interval or range, it won't be worked. So now we also have not equal to, this means not equal to. If you want to use this operator for not equal to, you can use this one. So there are many of them, some of them I won't really mention them. They are called less than or greater than, you know what is the meaning of that. So now we can also say, okay, tax, if this person pay tax, which means tax, we can say, we can generate a formula. Let's say maybe we have a float tax. So float tax, then we can use this here that, okay, see out. We can make tax, see out tax, which is equals to salary plus, or we, you can just create a formula first. You can just say tax equals to salary. You just write salary. You multiply it by, let's say we multiply it by 15%, which is 0 0.15. So this is amount and see out. We can see out tax. You can just say to make it nice and tax amount. Tax amount. Just write tax like that. End line. So now after that, because of we are going to, we won't be using the else statement now. We're going to use it at the end. What we are doing now here, we are working on the neatest if statement where we're going to use else if. So we can have we can also have else if we can say else if the tax salary is greater than 80, let's say greater than 80k, 80,000, and we're gonna use end again, and our salary is less than or equals to 120,000, 120,000. What must happen? We gonna implement tax as equals to salary, multiply by, we're gonna multiply it by 20%, which is 0, 0,2. And then we can see out the amount of salary, tax amount. Tax. End line. So we're going to see out tax amount to be like this way, tax end line. So else, I'm just going to, you can also have as many else if as possible, depending on the question. Then here I'm going to use else only. Else the amount is above, none of that is greater than those amount. Remember here, we also implemented that our if statement must start at greater than. So this one here, we can also change it, let's say maybe else. We can use else if, you can still use else if, let me just use else if, you can still use else if salary, salary is greater than 120,000, then what must happen? Then tax is going to be 25% equals to salary multiply by 0, 0.25%, then you can out display the salary tax amount tax and line so now we have just written the code for if statement so let's try to run our code build first we see if we have made some mistakes 
we have made mistakes somewhere here. We're gonna check that. According to here, it says ex line 13 expected. Okay, less. Okay, there are three of them. Let me take one there. Then now our code is fine. So if our text, let's say for example, is 1000, it will have a problem. Let's say it's 1000 because we didn't include text between 0 to less than 60, but it won't say anything. It's fine, but you have seen the purpose of the program. But if our text, let's say, is 75%, 75,000, you will see that your text amount is 180. 118,000 something the way it says there. Text amount is 18,000. Okay, no, it's not even 18, it's more than that. So we can also fix here. Yeah. Let's check our code. Our tax amount cost to salary multiplied by 0 0.15. So why our tax must be, let's make our tax to be zero, okay? So that we can get the good results. Then tax amount, and you can also see the tax amount. Let's just write like that. I'm just, because I've made the changes in my code, I'm going to build again and run it. So let me try to write 75,000, 1, 2, 3, 75,000. Then it's telling us the amount to be paid is 1,000 something is fine. Then if we write amount above the above 120,000, it's going to give you more. It's going to use 25%. Let's say we write 300,000. You will see that you have to, for 300,000, you will see that you have to pay 75. Okay, yes, not really 300,000. It's approximately one, two, three, four, it's like three million in the way I've written it. Let me check the zeros. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, three million. So if you use it, it's saying that we must pay 75, 750,000, 750,000 because of 25%. But if we can use our calculator to check that, if it's true, you can check one, two, three, is 3 million, you multiply it by 25%, 0 0.25. You'll see that you are paying 750,000, which is exactly the same thing. So this is how you use the if statement. So with the if statement, I won't talk much because we are still going to use them in many functions, like in many lessons that we are still going to do. We are still going to use them in everything that we're going to be programming with. So I'm going to go straight to the if while loop now. When we talk about the while loop, when while loop, while loop is about repeating. So when we say repeating, you're going to be repeating things. It can be same, same things or it can be repetition of number or it can be maybe you want to calculate, for example, you want to calculate how much you're going to have if you're investing an amount, maybe 500 rand a month. You want to see how much you're going to have uh, maybe in 20 years. You can use a while loop because that thing is looping. So with a while loop, you will have a condition and then also you will have a body. In your body, you write the statements that need to be executed. So let's start with a simple while loop statement. When we do while loop, let's say we want to print hello world five times, we can use a while loop. We can have an initialization, which is int i equals to, you can start at one. Then after that, you can have your while loop. Your while loop, you can say while i is less than or equals to, let's say we want to print it five times. Then you can see out, we can say see out in the body, what do we want to print hello? Hello, hello there, hello there, hello there. So we want to print hello there. We can also put an end line. So if you see here in our while loop, if we just print this, it's going to be an infinite loop. Let me just show you what I mean. If we print, it will never stop. It will be printed hello, enter. You see, it's even gonna damage your computer sometimes. Let me close that. In order for us, for our while loop to be fine, we have something called increment and decrement. Decrement. You need to know about increment. In increment, if I put i, 
because I'm using the letter I, I++, plus plus, it means that it must increase by one. It must increase by one. And then if I put I minus minus, it means that it must decrease, decrease. It must decrease by one. So increment and decrement, we can also tell it how many times it must increase or decrease. If I can say I plus equals to I plus two, it means that it must increase. It must increase by, by two, increase by two. If I put I equals to I minus five, it means that it must decrease. This is an increment, it must decrease by five. So now in this format, sometimes if you want to write this statement here, for I plus equals to two, you can write it I plus equals to two. It's still they are the same statement, they are equivalent, they, are the same, do, they do the same job. So if you want to write this one here, for I equals to I minus one, you can just say I minus equals to five. They are the same statement. So decrement and increment is about increasing and decreasing. So if you need more lesson on increment, you can let me know, but there is nothing much that we need to talk about. So because here I'm going to increment by one, I wanted to type to this be display five times. I can just use my I plus 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 plus. Then it's going to increment by one. This I is going to start at one. It's less than five. It's fine. That is true. Then it print this statement. Then it change it increment one to two. It's two less than five until this statement here is false. So let's build our code and run our code. So if we run our code, we'll see that it types hello there five times. One, two, three, four, five. So you can type anything that you want. Maybe you can do any program based on this while loop. So I'm going to go for some other, like maybe you want to write a program. Let's assume you want to write a program that is going to ask a user to enter numbers. You can write a program that you ask a user to enter numbers. And then after that, when a user is done entering numbers, then you can add those numbers. You can subtract them. Let's assume that, okay, the first thing, we are going to ask a user to enter the numbers. Let's roll that. So let's see out. Uh, maybe this program, it can be intended for a teacher or a lecture. Enter the score, the result, or the results of your learners. Let's assume that is for high school, for your learners. Then we're going to see in results. We can just write results or result like that. Then we have to also declare. Let's assume that our results are going to be an integer. We're going to say int results. Then when we have agreed that our results are going to be integers, then we assume that there will be no result which is greater, which is less than zero. So while our results, our results is less than greater than zero greater than or equal to let's use greater than or equal to zero because there is possibility that a student can get zero in the exam so greater than or equals to exam greater than the result is greater than or equals to zero so what must we do so we need to add we need to allow this the first process we need to allow this is us to keep entering this to the learn teacher to keep entering the results we can write see out see results you can just write results like that. So just by doing this statement, um, our code is going to ask the user to keep answering, like the teacher will keep entering those results until a teacher enter any number that is less than zero to exit the code. So we didn't really tell the teacher that enter any number less than zero to exit the code, but let's assume we did that. Enter the results for any, for your student learners, the first learner can get 29 is possible. The other one can get 100 percent is possible. The other one can get 45 is possible. 66 is possible. 90 is possible. But after that, let's assume that the teacher is done answering. Then the teacher can decide to enter negative one to exit the code. Then the code will stop. So this is how we do the code. We write inside our line loop. We write again the word the C in statement to keep capturing. So now we might want to know how many results did the teacher 
captured. So in order for us to know that, we can also have another int here, or we can just put here, we say comma, we can say int x equals to zero. So when our int x equals to zero, we must know that your starting point is going to start at zero, it's gonna add them. So we're gonna put before the C in inside the scene we put that x plus plus so this one is going to tell us that the how many students does this teacher have or that how many students are in that class in the class that the teacher is teaching so let's see out x here we can see out x i will also put an end line all right now let's build our code when we build our code, you will see that um, please enter the results. I can enter 90, 100, 29, 33, 49, then 50, then negative one, I'm exiting. So it's going to tell me that there are six learners in this class. Maybe it's a grade 12 class. In the last count, you may see that is one two three four five and six but it didn't count one negative one and it's not supposed to count negative one why did it not count negative one we go to our code now program it didn't count negative one because of we put the c in x plus plus before c in c in dot results if you put it outside after c in it was going to count it and it's not we are not supposed to count negative one because negative one is not a result of a student that's why i put it on top of this c in so now we might want to know the sum maybe want to see if the teacher is really teaching properly or if his class is performing the performance of his class we might want to know the sum of uh, those students so we can just use int because the sum of the student is still, still going to be int we can just say sum equals to zero so for the sum equals to that we are going to increment it's like we are looping again we can say sum equals to sum plus what plus results the results we just write the word results it's going to add all those results so if we see out here we can see out sum and line. Then maybe you can make it nice. You write, a, let me say, total sum. You can just say total sum. Then here we can also maybe make it nice. Total number, total number. Let me just use an old word. Total number of the student. Total number. Of learners total number of learners let's build our code we have a problem let's check where there is this idea i'm gonna put less and then this one here is supposed to be not there let's build our code it's telling us now we still have another code problem semicolon then let's build again we don't have any problems so now we're gonna put 90 again 169 let me say this is my class my class is passing 87 and then the other one got 98 i'm teaching juniors 79 and then i'm done entering my class my results for my student learners negative one and it will tell you the total number of learners. We have six, so one, two, three, four, five, six. The total sum of these results is what is 50, 523. So now we might want to know the average of this so that we can see if the class is working properly. I can see out, I say 
Maybe for example, I might make a function because I want to also use the if statement. So I will make a function that, okay, I have here int, I will just use int average. I will say average, ever. So in int ever, we're gonna make our semicolon. We're gonna say our average outside here, that ever, ever equals to sum divide by x. Then after that, I will say if my other average, I'm using an if statement now, if other is greater than, if other is less than, let's start with less than or equals to less than or equals to 50%, less than 40 or okay, less than 30. Let's start with less than 30. Then this class is not performing see out. We're gonna say poor performance. Poor performance. Poor performance. And then else if else, we're gonna use else if, else if this result is greater, is between maybe 50, greater than 30 to 50 or 40. Okay, else if average is greater than 80 and this average and this average is less than is less than or equals to less than or equals to 49 let's use 49 49 we can just moderate high or low where uh, can just say a uh, c out maybe poor not poor performance we can just say each one students or learners all right not teacher learners it won't really work properly let's uh, just say maybe try harder try harder is gonna be fine try harder try harder Then, then else if the result is above 50 just due to time i'm just gonna say else if the result is 50 is the average is greater than 50 great equals to 50 then i will just use the word better better performance better pay performance performance and line and line so now we have created this let's build our code our code is fine so now it will ask us enter the results let's say our results for our student Okay, there's some errors here. I wish I can delete that. Let me just cancel this code and run it. And then something here, let me just, so that we can see properly, I'm just gonna add end line here, slash n. Let me just put slash n means end line. I'm just gonna build my code again. So I'm gonna start with 90, 44, 69, 22, 77, 87 and the negative one to exit. Okay, there was a problem again. I put 300, I don't like it. I want the results must be below 100. Uh, 77, 99, 33, 44, 66, 100, 99 again. The other one got 79, then negative one. Then that's what total number. The total number of learners is eight. This one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
the total sum is 506.97 and then 97 then the average this is the what this is to, total sum is 587 and uh, better performance né? it calculated so we can also add but you wouldn't really add uh, the what we didn't really add the c out we can just say c out average class average we can just say class average then we'll just put our end line So let's just do that 44, 55, 66, 77, 88, 99, 123. We know that as a student in class we we'll always get less results than negative one or negative two. You can even put negative two. Then it will tell us the total number is eight student and then the average sum and class average is 16 and which is better performance. So this is how you do it when you are using the while loop so we have shown you guys how to use a while loop when there's a get area whereby you can put it a stopping point you will write the sum the average and the what and also you do the if use an if statement to check if your results are better or what if the average is better or try harder using the if statement so the questions won't be exactly the same the way I'm using here I'm programming here but it's the same style if you understand how to use the while loop and if statement then whenever you approach a question whereby you have to use the if statement or the while loop you won't have any problem so if you can try to go maybe to your book you have a question let's see which don't know where I am I here let me see I just want to check okay this page number let me check the topic number I don't see the topic just see okay it's fine I'm gonna scroll 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 okay this is lesson seven I want to go to lesson eight let's go to lesson number eight Okay, but all right, let me check. This is okay. Conduct the following. I think it's lesson. What will be the output of that? All right, okay. This is part two, part three, part two. Let me see if I'm missing something. That's okay. 